exclusive. You've heard the phrase countless times. That's what she said. <laughs> but did you ever wonder where it actually came from? Well, we did. And our search took us here, to Long Beach, California. Meet Kim Marlowe. This middle-aged divorcee claims to know where that's what she said actually comes from. It comes from me. I said those things. Shocked? We were. But Kim Marlowe has proof to back up her claim. When I was in junior college, I used to f a lot, and um, I said a lot of things. <laughs> I guess it started one day when this guy I was doing was helping his friend move, and uh, they got this big couch jammed in the doorway. And so the guy I'm f says, you're going to need a miracle to fit that thing in there. And then, of course, because his friend is a total he says, that's what Kim said. And when had you said that before? I said it the night before when he was trying to me in the ass. Kim says that other lovers started quoting her private words, and they soon became popular catchphrases at Long Beach City College. You know, I said a lot of during sex. Sure. But then people just start taking everything I said out of context. Sure. You know, like, if I said I'm stuffed, Mm -hmm. It wasn't always during sex. Sometimes I said it after I ate a lot. Or the time I said, well, hope you like a nice full bush. I was talking about a project for my horticulture class. Kim, I have here a few quotes oh that have God. been attributed to you. Never ends. Uh, in what context did you mean that's the biggest one of those I've ever seen? Oh, I was talking about a Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. We were at a Christmas tree farm, and I had never seen such a beautiful big... Christmassy tree. You had never seen. That's going to be sore tomorrow. I was talking about my pussy. Okay. Put the doggy in the bathtub. That's a sex thing and a dog washing thing. Just a practical mm -hmm. thing. Literally, let's wash the dog in the bathtub. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, and in terms of sex, put the doggy in the bathtub is when you try to fit somebody's balls in your ass and they just, you know, just keep popping out. But Kim started to enjoy the attention she was getting. She was recognized on campus and around town. People would stop her and ask her for quotes. Eventually, she started performing at parties. Well, I'm sorry, Bill, but I can't even find it. Well, you can put that anywhere. Well, I'm the one that should be crying. It's like a waterfall down there. Everyone was repeating my words. I thought, hell, why not make some money from it? And did you? Sure I did, at first, until that Mike Myers ruined everything. That's right, you heard me, Mike. Let's roll a clip. <sighs> okay. Hey, are you through yet? Because I'm getting tired of holding this. Yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> what was your life like then? <sighs> I used to drink back then, and um, I started hitting it pretty hard. It was a bad time. Up this hand. She tried to put her phrases on the internet to maintain some proof of ownership and maybe eke out a modest income. But she says sites like Napster and Pirate Bay gave her the same problems as many musicians. Kim, are there projects in your future, opportunities on the horizon? No. Last year, some people approached me about doing a tour, mm. reading some of my best phrases live. Right. But I turned them down flat. Mm -hmm. And what? Uh, uh, I'm sick of this. Yeah. I just want to get on with my life. Mm -hmm. It's too hard and it's painful. Mm -hmm. It's too hard and it's painful. Are you f kidding me? What? Are you no, no, f can I kidding me? It's too hard. Okay, you know what? It's too hard. And it's painful. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. All right. Like, 